Everyone's telling you AI agents are the future, but what they're not telling you is that they fail 70% of the time, and most people are using them completely wrong. The truth? AI agents are already transforming how smart businesses work, but only if you know where they actually help and where they're almost guaranteed to screw things up. Most of the hype you're hearing is either fear-mongering or flat-out nonsense, and today I'm cutting through all of it and I'll show you exactly what AI agents can do right now, where they fall apart, and how to use them safely without becoming another failure statistic. Hey everyone, it's Jake Dawson here, and I've been testing AI agents for months now. Yes, I've automated parts of my workflow that actually saved me real time. And yes, I've also had AI agents totally mess up simple stuff. Like one time, it confidently booked me a meeting with myself twice. So yeah. We're gonna keep it real today. In this video, you're going to learn exactly what AI agents are, why they mess up so much, and most importantly, what they're actually good at right now without all the techie nonsense. No hype, no sci-fi fantasy, just real talk based on real research and my own experience using these tools every day. And hey, if you wanna see how other people are actually using AI in the real world, I've got a private school community where we can swap ideas, share templates, and help each other out. The link's down in the description below if you wanna check that out. Look, by the end of this video, you'll know exactly where AI agents can save you time and where you definitely shouldn't trust them just yet. So let's get started with what the heck an AI agent actually is. All right, so here's the simple way to think about it. An AI agent is kind of like having a really smart assistant who can jump into your computer, open your apps, click around, and try to get stuff done for you. But, and this is important, this assistant has a habit of messing up most of the time. And I'm not making this up. This is what the research says. When they get it right, they're awesome. When they get it wrong, well, let's just say you could end up sending your boss an email meant for your mom. It happens. Now, le let me give you a real world way to picture this. Imagine you're hungry and you go to a vending machine and you press a B3 and you get your favorite candy bar. Every time it happens, that's regular automation. Stuff like Zapier or make.com, when it's set up with simple, if this happens, then do this kind of rules, it works, it's predictable, it doesn't surprise you but AI agents totally different story using them is like hiring this brilliant intern straight out of college so let's talk about what's actually going on behind the scenes without getting too techy traditional automation is basically like a flowchart something happens like you get an email and the automation says cool I know what to do with this send this type of reply for this type of email it's black and white super reliable for stuff like sending confirmations, moving files, or posting updates. AI agents don't follow those exact rules. Instead of saying, do this every time, you give them a goal, like help me stay on top of my inbox and reply to people appropriately. So they look at the situation, the context, the tone, all the messy human stuff, and sometimes they nail it. And other times they completely miss the point. That's where the judgment errors come in. Now, why does this matter? Why am I harping on this instead of just showing you the shiny new features? Because I don't want you to fall into the trap that a lot of people are falling into right now, thinking that these tools are magical, fully reliable, or worse, using them for stuff that they're terrible at. Let me give you some real numbers so you can see the big picture here. Carnegie Mellon ran tests on AI agents inside a simulated office environment, basically pretending that they were workers handling day-to-day -day business stuff. The agents failed around 70% of the time when tasks got even slightly complicated. Now, on the other hand, IBM reported 3.5 billion in productivity gains using AI over two years. But here's the kicker. That was across over 70 different business areas and always with human supervision in place. So yeah, AI agents can help, but only if you know where to use them. All right, so let's get into the part that you've probably been waiting for. What can these AI agents actually do right now without blowing up your workflow or making you look bad? Let's start with email, because I swear, if you're anything like me, your inbox looks like a disaster zone half the time. AI agents are actually solid when it comes to simple email sorting and flagging. And I mean simple. They can go through your inbox, pick out stuff that looks urgent, sort newsletters into folders, and keep things somewhat organized. But and this is big, don't let them write responses yet. I tried that. Let's just say one of my clients got an AI generated reply that made zero sense and I had to spend the next half hour apologizing. So yeah, use AI for triage, not for relationship management. And if you're using something like Lindy or even Outlook with Copilot, just set the AI to flag emails with words like urgent, follow-up, or anything from key clients. Keep it basic. 
Next up is calendar scheduling. Now, this one's really handy if you're drowning in back and forth, trying to find times for meetings. AI agents can find open slots, send out invites, and help you avoid those endless, does 2 p.m. work for you? These types of emails. I use this in a simple way. I have the AI look for any 30 minute free block next week and send a placeholder invite. But here's the thing, don't ask it to prioritize or reschedule anything complicated. Trust me, you'll end up double booked or worse. Think of it as your basic time finder, not your personal assistant with decision making skills. The third one that saves me time is basic data entry and simple research. AI agents are actually decent at filling out forms, grabbing contact info from websites or putting together simple lists. For example, example, I have an AI setup that pulls business names, websites, and LinkedIn profiles into a Google Sheet. It's fast, but the key is you have to double check it, everything, because sometimes they grab the wrong info. I had one agent once list the same company three times under three different names. So yeah, it's helpful, but you still need human eyes before you act on anything. Now, let's talk about customer support. I'm not talking about handling angry customers, right? That's still very much a human job. But for basic FAQ level stuff, like uh, what are your opening hours? Or how do I reset my password? AI agents do pretty well with that. They can answer simple questions or route tickets to the right person. And I've set this up for my own website using a basic chatbot. Just don't let it near actual complaints or emotionally charged messages because they will miss every human nuance and make things worse. Another one that saved me time is is content summarization. If you've got long articles, you know, meeting transcripts or reports that you don't want to read top to bottom, AI is your friend here. I use ChatGPT's features for this. Just, you know, paste the text and say, give me the key points in five bullets. It won't catch every subtle detail, but for a first pass, it's solid. It's like the AI version of the too long didn't read friend we all wish that we had. All right, for those of you doing social media or managing your brand online, AI agents can help with basic social media monitoring. They can track when people mention your brand, when something needs your attention. I use this to keep an eye on brand mentions without having to sit on Twitter all day, right? Just know that sarcasm, humor, or anything not spelled out directly will fly right over the AI's head. So don't rely on it for full reputation management. Number seven is lead research. And listen, this one is a time saver, but it's also where people get a little bit too trusting. AI agents are good for gathering basic info, names, emails, LinkedIn profiles. I use this in make.com all the time, but they are awful at actually figuring out who's a good lead. So I have the AI gather, then I or someone on my team double checks. It cuts the research time in half, but the final decision still needs human judgment. Next up is a simple report generation. AI can pull numbers from your system, pop them into a Google Doc or a PowerPoint slide, and make you look like you've been working on it for hours when really you haven't. But just remember, AI has no clue what those numbers actually mean, right? So if your sales drop last week, it can't tell you why. It just reports the data. So use it to save time on formatting, not on analysis. Number nine, inventory monitoring. If you're running any kind of shop or managing products, AI agents can track stock levels and ping you when things run low. I set up a simple alert using Make and Google Sheets for a friend's online store. It's great for keeping you in the loop, but don't expect it to predict seasonal trends or sudden surges. It's a reminder tool, not a crystal ball. And last but not least, task creation and reminders. This is probably one of the easiest wins. You can tell your AI to remind you to call someone, follow up on something, or send you a ping when it's time to check a report. I use this every day. Just don't expect it to prioritize your entire to-do list. One time mine reminded me five times in a row to water my plants while completely forgetting to remind me about an important client call that I had. So yeah, helpful, but not exactly life management material. All right, so now that you know what AI agents are actually good at and where they tend to crash and burn, let's talk about how to actually use them safely today without creating more problems for yourself. Because trust me, I've made pretty much every mistake that you can think of with these tools. And I just don't want you going down the same road. So the smartest way to get started is to stick with low risk tasks. Don't go handing over your whole business to an AI agent right out of the gate, right? That's like giving the keys to your house to someone that you just met at Starbucks. Instead, start small. Email sorting, this is a great one. Just having the AI help organize stuff so you're not drowning in newsletters and spam. But 
and this is key, don't let it reply to anything important. I've seen some wild AI generated emails that made me cringe. So stick with sorting for now. Another easy one is calendar availability. This basic stuff like find me free 30 minutes next week. Nothing fancy. You don't have to try to reschedule things or make decisions about who's more important because that's when it starts making weird choices. Data entry is another spot where AI can help without you know too much risk. Let it fill out forms, copy info into spreadsheets, that kind of thing. Just make sure you double check what it's doing because well, it's an AI and it'll mix up things sometimes. Same goes for simple reports. AI can pull numbers, pop them into charts and make you look productive. Just don't tell it the story behind the numbers because that's where it's gonna fall apart. Now, here's the golden rule that I live by when it comes to AI. Never fully trust the output without giving it a quick human review, especially for anything important. If it's an email to a client, financial details, or something that your customers are going to see, you've gotta check it. Think of AI like that friend who gives advice that's either brilliant or completely off the rails. You still gotta use your own judgment. So let's talk real quick about pricing too, because I know some of you are wondering how much is this gonna cost? And the good news is that a lot of these tools have free plans or starter tiers. Lindy AI, for example, has a free version that gives you some decent amount of credits to play around with. And after that, it's around uh, 50 bucks a month. Zapier with AI runs between 20 to 50, depending on how much you're using it. And if you're already using Microsoft stuff, Copilot is 30 bucks a month. Honestly, for the time that it can save you, even the paid versions are usually worth it if you're smart about how you're using them. Now, here's how I recommend you roll this out without getting overwhelmed. Pick one simple task, just one, like email sorting or calendar availability. Set it up, test it with something that doesn't matter if it fails, see how it behaves, build in little checks so you can catch the mistakes. And once you're confident it's doing the job right, then you can slowly add more. Don't jump in the deep end right away. AI can save you a couple hours a week. It can cut your data entry time in half and it can help you respond faster to basic stuff. But what it doesn't do is magically transform your entire business overnight. It won't run everything perfectly without you watching over it. And it definitely won't replace the human touch, you know, where it counts. All right, so before we wrap up, I'd love to hear from you. I mean it, drop me a comment here because I actually read every one. So what's the one repetitive task that eats up the most time in your day? Like the thing that you'd gladly hand off to an AI agent if you could trust it to not mess it up. And after everything we talked about today, which one of these AI tasks feels the most realistic for you to try? And if you appreciated this kind of straight up, no hype research backed breakdown of AI agents, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. I've got more videos coming your way where I'm going to walk you through actual setups, step by step, click by click, so you can actually start using this stuff without the headaches. I'm also planning one on how to double check your AI's work because yeah, you definitely need that part too. And I'll keep you posted as the tech gets better over time. And if you want extra help or just wanna see how others are using AI in real life, you can join my private school community too. The link's down in the description. Look, at the end of the day, AI agents are powerful tools. They're like kitchen knives, super useful, but you definitely don't wanna start juggling them. If you use them wisely, they can actually save you time, take a little stress off your plate, and free you up to focus on the things that really matter in your business. But if you use them blindly, yeah, you're gonna end up in that failure club and nobody wants that. All right, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I will see you in the next one. Uh, oh, and before you click away, here's another video you'll probably wanna watch next. It's packed with even more tips to help you crush it with automation. See you there.